So when I look out at all of you, I just see people who are really interested in making change in this world, people who are committed to really a different lifestyle. You know, why have we all come to India in the first place? You know, I mean, most people here, you probably didn't come here just for the traveling aspect of it. Maybe you did, and maybe you just found yourself in this meeting because somebody told you about it. When I came to India the first time, I was looking for education into the nature of intelligence. I wanted to understand how to use my mind in the most beneficial way, where I could stop harming myself and harming others, either if it was subtly or very overtly. You know, and I know a lot of people, you come to India because you want to find out what is the nature of reality, what is the nature of our mind, what is the nature of this magnificent existence. I just got fed up with living in a world of, of extreme negativity. You know, I, I just had enough. So I was like, I'm packing it all in. I'm going traveling for nine months and I'm going to see what other people around the world are up to because of a lot of, a lot of great books about how, you know, there's a way to be in reality where you get to utilize your gifts, your strengths and your talents in the most optimal and beneficial way. Funny enough, in those nine months of traveling, I didn't really find what I was looking for. And I went home and I was like, well, okay, here I am back in the States again. And I learned a little bit. I, you know, I did all kinds of interesting adventures and tried many different things and met a lot of cool people. And, but now I'm back and, you know, I got to get a job. and. I have no idea what to do with my career. I still have all these negative emotions. My thoughts are just going berserk and I have no way to calm my thoughts. So I was back to square one after that, you know, that whole intention of finding the answer. And then luckily somebody introduced me to th this training. So I went to an open meeting, much like this one, and I just, I heard some things that really clicked. It was like the answer I was looking for. I heard, allow everything to be as it is in short moments. Allow your thoughts just to be as they are. Allow your emotions and your sensations, all experience, just for short moments. And repeat these short moments of allowing everything to be as it is. So when I heard that, it was very contradictory to all the other things I had been trying. I had been trying to not allow everything to be as it is. I was trying to take the negative and do something with it so it looked positive or it got rid of it. And, you know, and that approach did not work and it doesn't work for anyone. If it, it might work temporarily. You know, if, you're, if you found a way to somehow take your negative thoughts or emotions and neutralize them where they don't come up, at some point they're going to come back. So it's great that this practice allows us to integrate positive, negative, and neutral in a realistic way in an empowering way. So th there was also the introduction to open intelligence. The introduction can be very simple. It's just to emphasize your power to know. When you just let all of your concepts, all of your ideas and belief systems about what you think the nature of reality is, just let those be as they are. You know, just it's like if you had a book and you this is the answer, this is the answer. Just put it aside for a moment. What are you left with? You know, we say to stop thinking, that's just to identify this alert cognizance. When you stop thinking, you can identify what is the basis of your thinking. This is not a practice of no thinking. So don't mistake the instruction of just to stop thinking for a moment with instruction that you need to be stopping thinking in every single moment, because that isn't going to be effective. If you're in, in a shop here and somebody says, no, 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 you can't return that, that blender, and, and you know, it obviously didn't work when you took it out of the box, to try to stop thinking in this moment where you're filled with <laughs> all of the thoughts about the shopkeeper and then it just proliferates into all the reasons why you hate India. And so you, you see, in a moment like that, it's really hard to stop thinking. So uh, instead, allow 
all of the anger, all the frustration, all the irritation to be as it is. You know, there's a lot of energy associated with it. The emotions start boiling up. And when we react, when we, you know, we say, okay, in order to justify this situation, it doesn't really open up to a vantage of solutions that are empowering for you or empowering for another person. Really what we want to do is empower everyone to see that the thoughts, the emotions, the sensations, they do not have this independent power to make us engage in the way we do in the world. I mean, you see the results when you engage in negative data, it just creates more war and physical attacks and a lot of self-attack. So I started to examine where am I attacking myself all of the time. For me, I've been so critical about everything. I just, I look around and I see what's wrong and needs to be fixed. That's, that's what I was born with. I'm a fixer. <laughs> And before this training, by focusing in on my fix-it attitude, it just turned into constant criticism. And internal criticism, moment by moment. It was like this internal chatter about what was wrong with me. All that practice I did when I went traveling didn't help myself get along with myself. You know, there was still that internal chatter. So I started to let that be as it is, not to inform who I really am. So just to share something very practically, something that's helped me tremendously is to focus on my gifts, strengths, and talents. Not even focus on them, just at least acknowledge them at first. I was always acknowledging what I wasn't good at. So take them, you know, in your day-to-day, -day, just acknowledge what are you really good at. What about you is totally amazing. When you let your thoughts about yourself be as they are, is there some underlying love and ease? Maybe you recognize that in the shop when you're arguing with the person. You just stop and you're like, actually, I really, I feel love for this person, even though the, their policy doesn't sound right. I, I can't hate them anymore just because of a stupid policy. But really, check that out. You know, do we want to let these thoughts, emotions, sensations, usually negative, ruin this amazing planet and ruin this species? So somebody needs to stand up and say, okay, we want to try something new. So acknowledging gifts, strengths, and talents, that's just a practical example. And that's really what starts to unfold when we rely on the Four Mainstays lifestyle of balanced view. The, the Mainstays lifestyle, they're an algorithm. Without one part of the equation, you don't get the result. And when I say result, the result is already here, okay? It's inherent within everyone. We just need to recognize it. Train it up. When we've been training in disempowerment, it's going to take some time to get used to empowered identity. So, in the balance view training, we have short moments of allowing everything to be as it is, recognizing open intelligence, emphasizing open intelligence, this vast, comprehensive view that within that view contains all the data, data points, information, thoughts, emotions, sensation. No need to split it up into parts or moments of in-between or anything like that. Data inseparable from open intelligence. Just like the images in a mirror are inseparable from that mirror. Or just like this air is inseparable, the breeze is inseparable from this space in here. All data, positive, negative, neutral, inseparable from open intelligence. So that short moments of just emphasizing open intelligence rather than emphasizing all the data points. And then you start to see what happens in your direct experience. Do you start to recognize a little bit more ease, a little bit more of a relief? It doesn't have to look or feel anything special. It's just emphasizing open intelligence where it starts to be noticed that it's there always. This wonderful, powerful thing you've been looking for is what's looking. That's what got me. What I was looking for was what's looking. <laughs> That's why I couldn't find it because I was like, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 
Oh, it's right here. That was a shocker, and that really cut the root of seeking. And what a relief. So then I can get on to the next part, which is training up. So then we have a trainer in Balance View. A trainer will cut through, help you cut through anything that you find is limiting. If you think you're not prideful and arrogant, develop a relationship with a trainer and you might start to find there is pride and arrogance. Maybe quite a lot of it. And that's a very powerful data stream to rest with. We all want to be right. But let that be as it is, and you'll find amazing beneficial solutions that help you and help everyone, and everyone gets to be right. Constantly criticizing ourselves and not acknowledging our beneficial potency is a form of pride and arrogance. So a trainer will really help you open that up, because it's hard for us to identify that. At least it was for me. I couldn't even identify how prideful and arrogant I was. And the trainer helped me see that. And it's not like he said, you're a prideful, arrogant person. It was just in a loving, gentle way, opening me up. There was a question about how do you open it up? Short moments opens it up. The trainer helps open everything up. The training, we offer a training here in Balance View. That helps open up the constricted focus on data. At first it might seem like it's prying open, but Actually, it's really quite effortless. Just reading through any of the balance view text, when you hear something like, all data vanish naturally, leaving no trace, like a line drawn in water, that metaphor has the ability to just evoke something very powerful and soothing, and it starts opening up a lifetime of data, a lifetime of confusion, tension, abuse. And then the fourth mainstay of the balance view global community, that starts opening. We open up together then. We get to look around and think, we're actually really amazing. We actually, you know, even though there's a lot of horrendous things going on, we have the ability to bring about the solution. We don't have to wait for one person to do it. We can do it together. And then along the way, we can have some fun together. We can do amazing creative things. You know, just look at what we do every day at the center. It's just opening up into solutions, not allowing ourselves to collapse back into the old way of relating. Just very practically, it's, it seems very easy to collapse back into old habitual ways of relating. And I've, you know, I've been involved for about seven years. And if I didn't have all four of the mainstays, it would be so easy to collapse back into the negativity. So I'm so grateful to my trainer, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to one other person who's been the most amazing guide, who's only ever been there to support me. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to sit here without the help of my trainer and the rest of the mainstays. So the, the four mainstays, it's an algorithm. If you only have three of them, the, the result is not guaranteed. When we say it's a guaranteed result, it, it also means your participation in it. You know, it's really up to us to apply each of the four points of the algorithm to have the result. If we just want the four mainstays to provide it for us and we don't engage in short moments of allowing everything to be as it is, if we're not relying on a trainer, if we're not using the training media, and if we're not spending time with the community, then, you know, how can the result be guaranteed? So it's really, it puts it back into your responsibility. But that's fine, you know, that's what you all want. You wouldn't be here otherwise. <laughs>